The anime begins with our protagonist, Yuki Amano running for his life. No matter where he runs, his classmate Yuno arrives there before him. He enters an elevator to escape from her, but Yuno also arrives there. As she approaches him, Yuki in panic starts wondering where things went wrong. We go back one week ago, Yuki is a school student, who has zero social life and spends most of his time observing things around him and writing them in his diary. Apart from this, he talks with two of his imaginary friends. First is Deus, who is supposedly a god that governs time and space. And the second is Murmur, who is his servant. Just like it, every day he spends his time like this. One day, Deus asks Yuki if he will take part in an interesting game that will fill his life with excitement. Yuki, believing it's an imagination, doesn't give it much of a thought and agrees. The next day, he wakes up and notices there are some weird entries written in his diary. About how he will hit double bullseye in two minutes and how he'll see the news about a serial killer in ten minutes. Yuki doesn't recall writing them, but yet again he doesn't give it much of a thought and begins his day by throwing the dart and hitting the double bullseye. During breakfast, he watches the news about a killer. It's at this moment, Yuki realizes the things in his diary are becoming real. At school, the diary even predicted a surprise quiz, and a girl cutting her finger. Yuki begins to panic and talks with Deus. But he soon finds out that Deus is not his imagination and the game he told is real. Before Yuki leaves, Deus warns him to not break his phone or else he'll die. At first, Yuki was freaking out, but then he realizes as long as he doesn't break it, he can rule his life. And just like anyone, he starts using the diary to achieve top rankings with a perfect score. And when some students become jealous and try to ambush him, he easily avoids them using it. A sudden rush of confidence and excitement starts filling in Yuki. During one of his tests, as Yuki using his diary, he notices a girl named Yuno staring at him. Before Yuki, she was the top student in the class. So Yuki starts wondering if she is also pissed at him for taking the top spot. After school ends, he is in shock to see a doll of murmur on her desk. Just then, a static noise comes and he checks his phone. In it, he is notified about his death in a few minutes by a serial killer. Yuki is freaking out. Just then, Yuno enters the class and tells him he is soon going to die. Yuki freaks out and starts running for his life. When he is cornered by her, he finally understands she also has a diary. Thinking she is the serial killer, Yuki grabs his dart to attack her. But suddenly, Yuno just kisses him. She shows him the person standing outside is the killer, who also has a diary just like them. Unlike Yuki, Yuno's diary is different. Instead of her, it shows Yuki's future for every ten minutes. And because of it, she calls it, the diary of love. Yuki is freaking out to see he has encountered a serious stalker. According to Yuno's diary, Yuki's death is supposed to be on the 14th floor. So instead of going there, they go to the rooftop. After some time, the killer arrives and starts searching for them. As per Yuno's plan, Yuki is hiding and waiting for her signal. Yuno suddenly appears and distracts the killer. Using this opportunity, Yuki uses his dart to destroy the phone. And as warned by Deus, when the phone breaks, the diary owner also dies. After this, Yuki confronts Deus with anger, asking why there are more people with diaries. Deus takes Yuki to a place called the Cathedral, where other diary owners are also present with their identities hidden. With it, Deus explains the survival game. There are a total of 12 owners, who possess the future diary. They have been numbered from 1 to 12. As of now, we know the first is Yuki, the second is Yuno, and the third one was the serial killer. The diary itself shows the future, but its characteristic is based on what the owners used to journal in their diaries before this game began. The predictions are not absolute. They can be changed as per the owner's action or if another owner takes a different action. In the case of Yuki, he escaped his death when Yuno intervened. The point of this survival game is for them to use their diary to gather information and eliminate the other owners. The one who survives till the end will be granted Deus's throne, meaning he will become the god of space and time. 
After knowing the rules, everyone starts to leave. But some of them are looking forward to eliminating Yuki. After all, he is the only one who escaped death and thus, it makes him the biggest threat. But Yuno assures him that she'll protect him, no matter who she has to get rid of. The next day at school, Yuki is worried to realize he can have an encounter with any owner at any time. After everyone leaves for the P class, a girl named Mane approaches Yuki. She reveals that the serial killer was actually his homeroom teacher. And that's why he is absent today. Yuki is confused as to who she is and why is she saying this. Just then, a static noise comes and Yuki's death is in three hours. Yuno comes to protect him, but Mane dodges and before jumping off, only says one word. Die. Suddenly throughout the floor, bombs start to explode. Fortunately, both Yuki and Yuno are safe. Yuno assures Yuki that he doesn't have to worry about anything because she'll kill that woman. Yuki is scared and wonders how a person can talk about killing so easily. But as things going, he doesn't have any option but to use Yuno to escape his death. With the help of their diary, Yuno is easily able to analyze when and where the bomb is going to explode. Outside, Mine is threatening everyone to stay in their class or she'll press the button that will trigger all the bombs. Back in the school, Yuno is worried and wondering about two things. First, why Mane didn't kill Yuki when she had the chance. And second, why Yuki's death is still fixed at 2.04 p.m. despite they are avoiding the explosions. Outside, the police have arrived and are ready to take down Mane. But strangely, the police chief, K issues an order to not kill her. He is also a diary holder, and using it he knows the moment Mane's heart stops all the bombs will automatically detonate. Back in the school, Yuno and Yuki reunite with their classmates, but strangely, both of them are caught by them. A few minutes ago, Mane made a deal with the school that if they captured Yuki and handed him to her, she would disable all the bombs. And that's why Yuki is being taken to her. His phone is taken away from him and kept at a distance. Throughout the ground, there are landmines. With almost everything being done, Mane threatens everyone to stay in their class or the bomb will trigger and explode. She promises to disable them when she is done with Yuki. Inside the class, Yuno is in a panic. She is determined to protect Yuki, so without any care about anyone, she breaks free and starts running towards him. As a result, the sensors are triggered and the bomb one by one starts to explode. Mane is confused as to what's happening. And just then K the fourth diary owner comes to Yuki's rescue. His future diary tells him about all the crimes about to happen in the future. He doesn't care about being a god, he just wants to eliminate all the crimes happening in front of his eyes. Just then, Yuno comes breaking through the window. While Mane is down, with the help of Yuno, Yuki avoids the landmines and takes back his phone. As Mane is about to trigger the landmines, Yuki comes charging at her holding his dart but he misses the phone and ends up stabbing in her left eye. With her being cornered, she uses the smoke screen and escapes. Afterwards, K with Yuki and Yuno makes an alliance. In order to stop this stupid game, K needs their diary's help to capture the rest of the diary owners. As of now, five diary owners' identities have been disclosed. The first and second are Yuki and Yuno. The third was the serial killer. The fourth is K himself and the ninth is Mane. As of now, the school is temporarily closed for a while. So K wants both Yuki and Yuno to spend time in the amusement park and act as bait to lure Mane. So the following day, as per the plan, both of them arrive at the amusement park. On one side, where Yuki is being cautious, but on the other side, Yuno is enjoying it as a date and hoping to get close to Yuki. As they start to spend time together, Yuki starts to realize that the girl he thought was a crazy stalker is just a cute girl who loves him very much. After enjoying most of the things, for the last event, Yuno wants to go to the planetarium, but Yuki refuses and instead, they go to the Ferris wheel. There Yuno asks him the reason he refused to go to the planetarium when he loves stars so much. Yuki with a scared look asks how did she know it. Yuki has forgotten his first interaction with Yuno so she recalls the day they had to write about their dream. 
Both of them had a hard time thinking about it, so they had to stay late in the school. Yuno went up to him and noticed that Yuki wanted to see stars with his parents. But he was unsure about it, as his parents recently divorced. So Yuno asked him if he would want to watch the stars with her, but Yuki refused because he only wanted to go with his family. So as a solution, Yuno promised to be his wife, so then, they would see the stars as a family. Hearing this, Yuki wonders how a girl can become so obsessed with such a simple promise. He asks if she is hiding something. But Yuno doesn't answer. She kisses him and says, it's a secret. Afterwards, both of them head home. Upon arriving at Yuno's home, while blushing, she requests him to stay with her for the night. Yuki agrees because Kei also told him to stay together until Mine is caught. In the house, there is no other person other than Yuki and Yuno and strangely, the electricity has been cut off. While Yuno is in the kitchen, Yuki uses his diary to search for the toilet. On the way, he comes across a door, about which there's no entry in the diary. Meaning, if Yuki opens it, the future will change. The moment he opens it, every diary owner's future changes and Deus's cathedral starts to fall apart. Inside the room lie three dead bodies. Yuno suddenly appears with a scary look, saying he shouldn't have opened it. Yuki in panic starts running. He arrives home, but soon after, Yuno also arrives. She starts heavily knocking on the door, requesting him to open it. Yuki tries calling Kei about it, but before that, he receives a message from Yuno about whom is he trying to call. It's at this point that Yuki realizes he just can't escape this freak. After a few minutes, he ends up falling asleep. On the other side, Mine is trying her best to escape from the cops. Using her diary, she knows which route is best, however, the cops are all over the place. Just then, a person approaches her. Mine looks at her diary and sees he is the only way for her escape. So she follows him and ends up in a cabin. The mysterious man has covered his face. He provides Mine with some painkillers. Mine doesn't sense any threat from him, so she decides to take some rest. However, soon her body starts to go numb. But still, her diary doesn't show any threat. Soon the phone turns into a wooden block, and the mysterious man reveals himself as the 11th diary owner. The scene shifts to the next morning. Kei has come to Yuki's house to pick him up. Yuki remembering yesterday's incident tries to tell him, but Yuno comes out of the car and stops him by saying she will get embarrassed if he tells anyone what they did last night. As Yuno intended, Kei misinterprets that both of them made love. Without any more delay, they get in the car and Kei reveals that Mine has been caught by a religious group called Omekita. After arriving, they meet with a worker named Oren who guides them to the priestess, Sabaki. Strangely, she is inside a wooden cage and is revealed to be the sixth diary owner. Her diary shows all of the things her followers will see or experience in the future. The diary is so powerful, Yuki is freaking out. But Tsubaki assures him she isn't interested in becoming a god. She is just a priestess who wants to help her followers. Mine is being kept underground and they are free to take her, but in exchange Tsubaki wants Yuki to spend the night with her. She is notified about her death, which will happen today. And knowing Yuki has escaped death two times, she wants him to stay and help her in preventing her death. Yuno is against it. But Kei decides Yuki will stay. Yuki doesn't have any dead flag, so if he can stay and prevent Tsubaki's death, then it's a win-win situation. After Kei leaves, Tsubaki warns Yuki to stay away from Yuno because she will destroy his life. It's not written in her diary, it's just her intuition as a woman. As they are talking, Yuno is getting furious to know Tsubaki is badmouthing her. And now she wants to eliminate her existence. Suddenly, the futon inside the cage starts burning, and a lot of followers in a hypnotized state start entering the room and start attacking each other. Yuki tries to save Tsubaki, but Yuno stops him. She warns him it's a trap and if he stays any longer, he'll die. But Yuki refuses. He'll not trust someone who is hiding dead bodies and isn't hesitant to kill anyone. He calls her a freak and proceeds to help Tsubaki. Fortunately, soon, the sprinklers start working. And with just one shout from Tsubaki, 
the followers break free from the hypnotism. Tsubaki thanks Yuki for trying to help her. She opens her diary, and upon carefully reading, finds out a mysterious man who pretended to be her follower is hiding in the shrine. Yuno carrying an axe approaches Tsubaki. But just then, Yuki's future changes and he is about to die in 13 minutes by the followers. Soon, the collapsed followers start rising again. To protect Yuki, Yuno starts eliminating them one by one. She gives her hand and asks him to pick either her and live, or pick Tsubaki, and die. Yuki just holds both of their hands and escapes. K, who fixed the sprinkler is filled in about the current situation. He tells them to go towards the main gate where the backup is soon going to arrive. He will meet with them after he finds Manet. In the shrine's basement, Manet is tied up. The person who pretended to be Tsubaki's follower is Hirasaka, the twelfth diary owner. Just like he hypnotized Manet into believing she was holding her real phone, similarly he is also the one who hypnotized the followers. Hirasaka knows the only way to beat Tsubaki's powerful diary is by creating confusion. His diary notifies him about any injustice about to happen in the future. It's similar to that of Kei's diary. But instead of written memos, they are voice memos. It's because Hirasaka is blind. Despite this disability, Hirasaka has developed sharp hearing. Using it, he knows what's happening above and it's making him frustrated to see other diary users interrupting his plan. Above, as Yuki and others are running away, the followers start coming back to their senses. Tsubaki stops Yuki and suggests to eliminate the intruder. But Yuno had enough. As she approaches Tsubaki to kill her, just then, Yuki receives a call from Kei about Hirasaka coming after them. He also tells them about him being blind and having sharp hearing. Soon after, five people calling themselves the Twelfth Diary owner arrive. They warn Yuki about Tsubaki being evil and this whole religious group being a cult that is involved in many illegal activities. As a person who aims to bring justice, Hirasaka is going to sacrifice himself and eliminate Tsubaki using a bomb. But even after hearing this and Yeno insisting Yuki to escape, he doesn't believe them and isn't ready to leave Tsubaki behind. With no other choice, Yuno decides to eliminate Hirasaka. Knowing he has sharp hearing, she creates a distraction. The person who reacts the first, she instantly eliminates him. After disposing of the body, the bomb explodes. But by this time, Yuno is exhausted. With Hirasaka being eliminated, Tsubaki shows her true colors. She initially planned to get rid of Yuki, Yuno and Kei at once using Mine as bait. But she never thought... Hirasaka would be disguising himself as her follower. She reveals she was never a priestess. Ever since she was a child, she had a bad eyesight. But her parents made her a priestess and started fooling people into thinking she had god eyes that see the future. And just like they intended, the number of followers started to increase. But after her parents died in an accident, the head servant named Funatsa took over the shrine. And to increase the followers, he started using her as a way for others to release their sins. Despite going through such things every day, she was able to endure such a disgusting world because she had her mother's handmade ball. However, one day the ball just vanished. And now, after what she has gone through, she will become the god and eliminate this world's existence. In front of Yuno, she kisses Yuki to make her suffer. But even after Hirasaka's death, Tsubaki is in shock to see her death is still pending. One by one, Yuno starts taking out the followers and deals a huge damage to Tsubaki's arm. She gives her phone to Yuki and pushes him to safety. Soon after, she collapses. On the roof, Kei is with Mine. With backup being kept out by the followers, he is in a tight spot. Inside the shrine, Tsubaki has tied up Yuno and planning to use her as a bait to lure Yuki. Yuki is currently hiding and scolding himself for trusting Tsubaki. He finally realizes Yuno is the one he should have trusted, even though she is a possessive girl with some dangerous secrets. Above everything, she loves him. Just then, an announcement is made. Tsubaki threatens Yuki to come, or else, Yuno will go through the same experience she had to go through. Yuki hears Yuno scream and is not able to bear it. 
He sees a ball and suspects it's the one that was made by Tsubaki's mother. He takes it and rushes to protect Yuno. He throws the ball, and as expected, Tsubaki on seeing her mother's handmade ball after so many years, ends up getting distracted. Using this opportunity, Yuki destroys her diary with his dart. With it, Tsubaki dies. Soon, the police enter the shrine and start taking care of the situation. On the way home, Yuki looks at Yuno and ponders, what exactly is this girl? She lives in a house with dead bodies, but is so obsessed with him that she'll do anything to protect him. He couldn't resist but kiss her. On the other side, surprisingly, Mine isn't arrested because Kay has made a secret deal with her. A week later, after picking up his mother from the airport, Yuki is on his way home. Yuki's mother's name is Ria, a programmer who works overseas. Most of the time she is abroad, but occasionally she comes to visit Yuki, like today. Upon arriving, they notices the window's glass is broken. Yuki checks his diary and immediately goes inside to scold Yuno. Yuno after reading her diary knew Yuki's mother was coming. So to impress her, she cleaned the house and made dinner. Ria finds her incredibly cute and misinterprets her being Yuki's girlfriend. As she eats the dish, Ria is so amazed by the taste that she requests Yuno to marry her son. Hearing this, Yuno couldn't be more happy. After dinner, Ria shares that her friend's son, Hojo will come tomorrow and live with them for some days. Hojo's parents were Tsubaki's followers, who died in the Omekida incident. Police haven't revealed to the public what exactly happened, and write off the incident as a mass suicide. It's gotten late. So Ria insists Yuno to spend the night here. Yuno agrees and while she is in the bath, upstairs, Ria prepares the bed. Before leaving, she teases Yuki and tells him that no babies before getting married. At night, while both of them are lying, Yuno wants Yuki to sleep next to her. But he refuses and clarifies he doesn't like her. Yuno with a confident tone says that he will. On the 28th of July, they will make love and become one. Yuki gets embarrassed and goes to sleep. On the other side, Yuno is relieved to know Yuki's mother is a cool person. Or otherwise, she had other plans. The next morning, Hojo arrives. Everyone is mesmerized to see how adorable he is. He starts drawing a picture of Yuno. After cutting it out, he tries to show it to Yuno, but he accidentally slips while holding a scissor. Fortunately, the scissor pierces the cushion and Yuno isn't hurt. Hojo apologizes for being reckless and goes to the washroom. Despite looking like an accident, Hojo did that intentionally. It's because he is the fifth diary owner. His diary is like a drawing book, which shows the future through drawings. Hojo doesn't aim to be a god, he just wants to have some fun. And eliminating Yuki and Yuno is a fun challenge for him. Despite being only five years old, Hojo has the intelligence of an adult. To eliminate two diary owners, he has brought some tools. Before lunch, he injects poison into the tomatoes. But when Yuki tries eating them, Yuno stops him, because they are heavier than when she washed them. She believes they are spoiled so she throws them away. Just then, the future changes and Yuki realizes another diary owner apart from him, and Yuno is near. On the other side, Hojo understands that to take down Yuki, he first has to get rid of Yuno. And to pull it off, he plans to electrocute her. Back in the room, the future again changes and Yuki is notified about Yuno's death by electrocution in a few seconds. The moment Hojo puts the wire, the electricity cuts off. It's Yuki who did it by tripping the circuit. And by watching Hojo holding the wires, they both understand he is also a diary owner. At night, when Hojo is asleep, Yuki starts searching for his diary. But Hojo comes out and reminds them, with the tiny brain they have, they can't possibly find his diary. Ignoring him, even the next day, Yuki keeps looking for it. But Yuno had enough. She grabs her hammer and goes straight for the hit, however, she accidentally hits Rhea. On witnessing the scene, Yuki is in shock. He quickly puts on the bandages and scolds Yuno for being so reckless. Yuno is very sorry for her actions. Yuki holds her and reminds her that unlike him, she can easily find the diary if she tries. 
while blushing, Yuno promises she will. Yuno gets serious and starts thinking of possible areas which are accessible to Hojo, and yet no one can find it. Knowing Yuki has searched every corner of the home, she assumes it's outside the home. Yesterday Hojo went to the convenience store with Ria, so she believes he mailed the diary to himself. And just then, the doorbell rings. Yuno alerts Yuki about it, and without any delay, he quickly grabs it. But as he opens it, a poisonous gas starts to leak, and he soon collapses. Hojo praises Yuno for her intelligence. But the package had to be opened from the other side. Yuno takes Yuki inside the bathroom. As the house starts to fill up with gas, Hojo starts knocking on the door and teases Yuno to come out and play with him. But even after minutes, when she doesn't come outside, he starts getting bored. He promises to give the antidote if she can find him in hide and seek. Yuki doesn't want her to go. But Yuno understands how important the antidote is. So she goes out and first breaks the windows and puts Ria to safety on Yuki's request. Then she starts searching for Hojo. But Hojo using his diary easily switches spots. After thoroughly searching the first floor, Yuno goes upstairs to find him. But she is too late. Hojo combines the bulb with the overflowing water and electrocutes her. Yuki hears the scream. Before Hojo injects the poison, Yuki comes to her rescue. But he soon collapses due to the poison. Yuno gets up in anger. With Hojo being cornered, she stabs him. And as promised, he gives the antidote. Before he dies, Hojo thanks Yuno for playing with him, unlike his parents who were always busy fighting. After he vanishes, Yuno collapses. Soon after, Mine comes and gives the antidote. She received a message from Kay about the fifth owner. So as promised she came. After some time, Kay with other police officers arrives at Yuki's home. With his help, Ria is told when she was unconscious, an intruder broke into her house and abducted Hojo. As for now, they are trying their best to find him, so she doesn't have to worry. Two weeks later after the incident, Yuki and Yuno are on their way to their new school. On the way, Yuki notices a person smiling at him. He doesn't give it much of a thought and goes to his school. In this school, with Yuno being in a different class, Yuki is nervous to see a lot of unfamiliar faces. But he soon notices that Ko, who caught him on Minea's orders is also in the same class. Suddenly, Ko starts speaking loudly, saying, isn't Yuki the one who almost killed every one of his classmates? And now he has come here as if nothing happened. Fortunately, two students named Hinata and Mao come to Yuki's rescue and stop Ko from bullying him. Soon after, the homeroom teacher enters the class. Recently, another killer is on a rampage. And to make sure the students are safe, the school wants them to enter and exit the school in groups. While he is giving further instructions, Hinata shares how the corpses found were badly injured with a lot of bite marks on them. After school, all four of them with Yuno go to visit the site where the bodies were found. Afterwards, they start exploring other areas in the park. Throughout the time, Yuno is keeping her distance. She is not at all pleased to see Yuki's new friends. After spending some more time, Hinata goes ahead to check the surroundings, but there she sees something terrifying. Soon after, a static noise occurs and a new entry is made. Yuki checks the diary and is in shock to read that Hinata is dead. He immediately rushes there and finds her dead body surrounded by a dozen dogs. Everyone is too scared to move. Just then Aki, who is their classmate and also the one who earlier smiled, arrives. He informs them of a nearby observatory for safety. They sprint there and reach it just in time. Aki introduces himself as an aspiring detective. He was already investigating the recent killings and after researching other recent events, he found out Yuki was strangely related to all of them. Aki isn't suspicious of Yuki. He only followed him thinking he might lead to another crime and hopefully prevent it. A few seconds later, the dogs have completely surrounded the observatory. Yuno believes the person controlling the dogs must be among his new friends so she suggests Yuki to use them as bait and run away. But Yuki refuses and starts holding the window to keep the dogs out. Using his diary, he predicts the next window that'll break and accordingly instructs others. 
Everyone follows his guidance, and after 30 minutes, the dogs leave. But suddenly, Mao grabs Yuki's phone and threatens to kill him. Soon after, Hinata makes a shocking entry. Surprisingly, she also has a diary. In return for Yuki's safety, she demands Aki to hand over his diary. A week ago, Hinata's father, Tsukishima also the tent diary owner, confessed to her about the recent killings. Tsukishima abandoned his family and poured all his devotion into his dogs. His obsession with dogs is so wild that he would spend an insane amount of money just to feed them the highest grade of meat, and himself he'll eat cup noodles. And as his dogs started to hunt humans, he also ignored it. But he came back to his senses and wanted to start over his life again. And for that, he needed Hinata to get rid of Aki, who had been pursuing him and knew about all his deeds. Hinata wished to have her father back, and that's why she decided to get rid of Aki. After noticing he was keeping an eye on a boy named Yuki, Hinata became friends with him and brought him to the park, so Aki could be lured as well. As she expected, the plan worked. Hinata demands Aki's diary, threatening to kill Yuki. But Aki doesn't want anyone getting hurt, so he suggests a coin flip. If Hinata wins, she gets the diary, but if he wins, Yuki goes free. Hinata finds it lame, but she agrees because she has Yuki's diary. But she starts to become a bit suspicious as to why Aki is playing such a game when he is bound to lose. Hinata tries to be creative. When Aki tosses the coin, despite the diary saying left, she picks right. And just then a static noise is made and the future changes. To Hinata's surprise, the answer was left only. Now as per the promise, she frees Yuki but keeps his diary, because she wants another round. On the other side, Yuno is suspicious as to why everyone's phone made a static noise except Taki. She pushes him on the floor and notices that his phone is just a normal one. It's revealed that Aki is not a diary owner. He suggested the game hoping to win in pure luck, and now knowing this, Yuno is more furious because he was risking Yuki's life. Aki gets up. He wants to continue to game and win back Yuki's diary. Before starting, Aki shares his plan with Yuno. Yuno agrees to follow, but she still doesn't trust him completely. Aki assures her he will not risk Yuki's life because his love for him is more than a friend. Yuno is just speechless. Soon the final game begins. This time, it's Hinata's turn to toss. She decides to follow Yuki's diary and puts the coin in her right hand. Before Aki answers, Yuno covers Yuki's ears. And then, Aki guesses the right hand, which is correct. And after Yuno takes off her hands, Aki lies to Yuki that he picked left, which is wrong. After telling this, Yuno knocks down Yuki. Hinata is in shock to realize she just lost. The reason Aki won is because Yuki's diary predicts only what he will see and believe. So even if it's a lie, as long as Yuki believes it's true, the diary will also show the same. Suddenly, Mao takes out her knife to attack, but Yuno quickly rushes and stabs her. Hinata pushes Yuno and drops Yuki's phone. While she is grieving over Mao's injury, everyone escapes. But soon she gets up and uses her diary's ability to order the dogs to attack. Yuki is notified about everyone's death. Aki plans that he with Ko and Yuno will distract the dogs, while Yuki will use this opportunity to take care of Hinata. Everyone agrees, but Yuno instead of following the plan, starts following Yuki. She suggests using Ko and Aki as bait to escape, but Yuki doesn't want to risk his friend's life in danger. He knows, despite what happened, Hinata had the chance to not play the game and use him as a hostage. But still, she played it and fulfilled her promise. Yuki knows that Hinata is not evil, it's her father. With no other choice, Yuno goes ahead and threatens to kill Hinata. Yuki in panic asks her the reason she is trying to keep him away from making friends. The reason Yuno is doing it is because she doesn't want anyone to get close to Yuki or they'll take him away from her. Yuki can see things would become ugly if he doesn't do anything. So as a solution, he lies that no one will take him away from her, because he loves her and wants to be her boyfriend. Yuno drops the knife and starts blushing. 
Yuki requests Yuno that as a boyfriend he wants her to accept them as his friend. Yuno happily agrees. Fortunately, the situation is under control, but Yuki understands he did something which can't be taken back. Hinata starts crying and apologizes to his father for failing him. Sakishima calms her and tells her it's fine. He is a bad father who was trying to escape from his actions by putting the burden on his innocent daughter. He wants to repent for his sins and tells Hinata to stay happy. Afterwards, a loud gunshot noise comes and everyone concludes that Tsukishima has taken his life. But in reality, it's Kei who killed him. The scene shifts to an unknown cabin, where Mane is working on her bombs. A few months ago, when the game began, Mane had an encounter with the third diary owner. But because of his armor, her bullets and bombs were ineffective. With no other choice, she escaped but during it, she ended up hurting her leg. There she comes across a police officer named Nishijima who was investigating the serial killer. On seeing Mine, who is a wanted criminal, he immediately arrests her and hides inside an abandoned building to avoid the serial killer. Mine has to pee, but Nishijima refuses to unlock the handcuff and goes with her. While doing it, Mine is too embarrassed. When she is done, she tries using the flush but it's stuck and she ends up using her strength resulting in breaking it and getting soaked in water. Nishijima notices her trembling with cold, so he picks a dress for her to wear it. At first, Mine refuses but after a lot of persuasion, she agrees. After changing, Nishijima looks at her and praises her for looking cute. But as Mine blushes and steps back, she trips and Nishijima ends up falling and accidentally grabbing her melons. He apologizes for it, but on seeing Minea's girly side he got a bit excited. Now to escape from the killer, Minea comes up with a plan. Accordingly, Nishijima distracts the killer and lures him into a room. Afterwards, they close the door and Minea uses her flash bang which creates a loud noise. After escaping from there, surprisingly, she shoots Nishijima and runs away. As a girl who was born amidst war, she hasn't felt or acted like a girl. To fix this corrupt world, she will become the god. The next morning, Yuki is invited by Aki to hang out. But unexpectedly, Yuno comes and shares she is also invited by Aki. Yuki realizes he has been set up by Aki for a date after he confessed his love. After a few minutes of traveling, they arrive at a bridal fair. It's a place chosen by Aki for their date. Inside the hall, they meet with Kei's wife who works as a staff. She becomes their guide for the day. After having lunch, both Yuno and Yuki change their dress and have a photo session. Yuki wants to tell her the truth before things become worse, but on seeing how happy Yuno is he believes it's fine if he tells her later. Afterwards, they have a chapel wedding as well. Even though it's an act, Yuki is uneasy. The things he saw in her house are hard to forget. If he could forget about it, Maybe he could fall in love with her for real. After that, Yuki takes her to her house. Upon entering, Aki is inside. He purposefully sent them to the date so he could investigate Yuno's house. He was hoping to find some bodies, but he ended up finding a very deep hole. Yuki is in disbelief. He asks Yuno about the bodies he saw, but Yuno seems to lose her memories. In fact, she believes it's Yuki's first time visiting her home. On the way home, Aki shares that Yuno's mental state is fragile, so she likely overrode her memory. After they part ways, the scene shifts to the police station, where Kei discusses the dead body of Tsukishima found in his mansion. Surprisingly, the two suspects are Yuno and Yuki, and he issues orders to arrest them within 24 hours. The secret deal made by Kei and Mane was to make sure he'd help her by giving the info about the police so she could escape them and in return. He wanted her to aim to become god. Yuki isn't trying to become a god, so for Kei, Mine is the right one because she has gone through a tragic past and understands the importance of a world without war. The scene shifts to Yuki walking and wondering about what he saw at Yuno's house. But suddenly, he gets surrounded by Nishijima and other officers. He is taken to the station, and soon Yuno also joins him. K while looking at his diary tells Nishijima to first bring Yuki in five minutes. Back outside, seeing Yuki is nervous, 
Yuno promises to protect him even if she has to get rid of everyone in this police station. After five minutes, Yuki is called up inside the room. K asks if he or Yuno killed Sakishima as they were spotted near his mansion on that day. Yuki immediately refuses. K assures him he already knew it. As a police chief, he had to interrogate him as they were suspects. Yuki is glad to hear it. But strangely, K forces him to play Russian roulette. Outside, Yuno receives a new entry. Even after being free from suspicion, K kept Yuki inside the room for another 10 minutes. Yuno loses her cool and while carrying a fire extinguisher, she walks towards the interrogation room. Inside the room, K fired four shots and all were empty. With only two remaining, he points the gun at Yuki. But before he can pull the trigger, Yuno enters and shoots K multiple times. Injured Nishijima arrives, but as Yuno is about to shoot him, Yuki stops her. Yuno comes back to her senses and is glad to know she protected Yuki. While taking Nishijima as a hostage, they escape. K is still alive, he only lost an ear and his vest stopped most of the bullets. But now, Yuno is charged with assault and attempted murder. And as he expected, all the entries about her start coming in his future diary. Yuno and Yuki are being chased by police. But when one of the police fires a warning shot, Yuki freaks out and in panic ends up shooting the police. K is notified about it. Everything is according to his plan. His diary only shows entries of criminals. So now by creating such a situation, he can keep track of both of them. He issues orders to arrest them, and if they resist, the officers are free to fire. Yuki is notified about his and Yuno's death by K. They arrive at the rooftop. Yuno kisses him and both of them jump. They safely landed on the truck and managed to escape. But from the next day, they become wanted and the police begin searching for them. They are hiding inside a storehouse and haven't eaten anything since morning. Soon they notice that Kei's wife is heading to the hospital. Yuki gets curious and starts following her. On the way, a bomb suddenly explodes. Mine appears and takes Yuki hostage, but he messes up the button and a bomb explodes wrongly because of which they get stuck. Using a ladder, as Yuki starts crossing, Mine stops him. She realizes she will not escape alive as things are going. So she decides to form an alliance with them. In return for her safe escape, she will tell them the reason K betrayed them. But just then, she receives a call from K. Because of his diary, he knows what's happening. So before he arrives at the hospital, he tells Mine to not let them escape. But she refuses and hangs up the phone. Soon, she also receives a death entry. After crossing the ladder, they go inside a room, where Kay's wife and their son are. He is terminally ill with three months remaining. Apart from wanting Mene to become the god, Kay also wanted her to cure his son's illness. But now that he is after her life, Mene will use them as hostages and will destroy his diary. Soon after, the police completely surround the hospital. Back in the room, after tying up Kay's wife, Mene assigns the roles. Yuki will scout, and Yuno will keep a watch on the hostages. Before Yuki leaves, Mine gives him a grenade. Afterwards, she calls Kei to propose a deal. In return for his son's and wife's lives, Mine asks Kei to prepare a getaway car for them and to kill himself. But to her surprise, Kei refuses to cooperate. He knows the chances of his son's survival are very low. So now, the only choice he has is to become God himself. He hangs up the phone, and the police force begins infiltrating the hospital. Yuki is notified about the deal failure but it's too late. The police are everywhere and arrest him. As Kei approaches, Yuno comes in time and starts taking down the cops. Kei manages to take Yuki hostage. But Yuno grabs the grenade and threatens to unpin it. Kei frees Yuki and tells Yuno to put down the grenade. But she unpins it and rushes towards him. On the other side, Mine plants a time bomb in a different room. After she escapes through the window, she yet again has an encounter with Nishijima. Both of them freak out. Nishijima grabs her, but just then a light comes out. The grenade Mine gave to Yuki was a flash grenade, so fortunately, everyone is safe. However, soon the time bomb explodes, 
and as a result, Yuki with others falls down. As he wakes up, Yuki manages to grab a gun, but Kei takes Yuno hostage. Yuki in panic, checks his diary and finds out that if he shoots, he'll miss and Yuno will die. Yuno sees the future and insists him to shoot. If dying is for Yuki's sake, and by him, she is more than happy. Even though she knew, he lied about loving her as a girlfriend, still the memory they shared was enough. Their wedding photo drops. Yuki looks at it and remembers the time they both shared. He tells Yuno that they are both going to live and marry. As Yuki stops panicking and starts gaining his composure, the future starts to change. He pulls the trigger, and the bullet hits Kei. Kei is desperate to become God. As he raises his knife to attack Yuno, Nishijima and Mine arrive. Nishijima heard the voice recording of Kei's plan to entrap Yuno and Yuki. Kei looks at his diary and accepts his fate. Unknowing both his son and wife are safe, he happily breaks his phone and before vanishing, apologizes to Yuki. The scene shifts to a different dimension, where Deus is angry at Murmur because she altered the future. Kei was supposed to know about his son's illness much later, and thus his fight with Yuki was supposed to be later as well. But because Deus's life is soon going to end, Murmur hurried things, so the next god can be chosen quickly. Deus isn't pleased and warns Murmur to never again interrupt the game. The following day, Yuno and Yuki are free of the accusations. Fortunately, the cop Yuki shot survived and with the help of voice recording, Nishijima took care of the case. Mine has yet again escaped, but it seems for some time, both of them can share some time as a couple. Yuki together with Yuno is going to the mountains to watch the stars as he promised. While he goes to the bathroom, Aki sends a message to him. But because Yuki's phone is with Yuno, she reads it. In it, Aki is warning Yuki to stay away from Yuno at all costs. On reading this, Yuno is pissed and deletes the message. After traveling for an hour on the bus, they arrive at the location and rest for a bit. Yuno grabs a cola and gives it to Yuki. On the other side, Aki goes to Yuki's house but soon finds out he is not here. He meets up with Nishijima and explains the situation. As a young aspiring detective, Nishijima already knows Aki and trusts his skills. He shares the information he found in Kei's diary. In the diary, everything about the survival game was written, from rules to the number of players along with the ones whose identities have been revealed. It was also mentioned how Yuki has been targeted by every diary owner. So it's very likely that by following them, they can stop any future incidents. As of now, Nishijima knows both of them are headed to the mountains, but doesn't know the exact location. After thinking through the bus route they took and Yuno's thought process, Aki gets a clue where they might be. So tomorrow along with others, he meets up with Nishijima at the town he suspects they are hiding. There, Nishijima introduces himself as a police and shares about Yuki being currently held by Yuno. Everyone in a worried tone asks the reason she would do it. Nishijima doesn't disclose everything. He tells them it's Aki's hunch after he went to investigate Yuno's house. He requests their assistance in finding them. Because if he uses the police, Yuno will get alerted and will run away. Soon they begin searching the town. The reason Aki chose this town is because as per the route Yuno and Yuki took, this town is abandoned. So it's easier for Yuno to hide Yuki without leaving any witness behind. But because they need water and electricity, so they only have to find hotels that still have those. As everyone begins to search such hotels, they come across traps set up randomly by Yuno. Aki receives a call from Mishijima about a hotel which is owned by Yuno's family. On the other side, Hinata receives a mail from Yuki, requesting her to help him. She receives the location and immediately heads there. Mao meets up with Aki and tells him what happened. Aki is suspicious because no matter what Yuki writes, Yuno will find out about it using her diary. So he believes it's a trap and Hinata is in danger. But just then, Mao receives a message from Hinata that she has found Yuki. Aki is still suspicious but he also cannot sit idle. So after arriving at the hotel, the finds a room in which Yuki is being tied up. Aki tries calling him, but Yuki doesn't respond. Thinking he might be unconscious, he goes inside the room with Mao, 
leaving Ko behind in case something goes wrong. As he enters the room, he soon finds out, it's a dummy. And as Ko also enters the room, the door closes. Soon, the room starts getting filled with gas. The scene shifts to a room where Yuki is being held in. Even though his eyes are open, he doesn't have any reaction. Yuno has picked this hotel because it's her father's, meaning she has full access to it. From here, she can keep an eye on the diary owners and police if they attack them. Here, she is willing to spend their entire life together. Just then, Aki looks at the camera and tells Yuno about knowing the two skulls she has brought with her. Aki went back to her home and found out human remains of three bodies inside the hole. Surprisingly, two of them didn't have any skulls. Yuno becomes furious and yells at Aki for waking up her parents. Aki assures her he has given them a proper burial, but he is curious about the third body. Aki threatens Yuno to release everyone, or else he'll inform the police. Yuno is amused to hear it and cuts off the call. And now, the gas starts filling more quickly than before. Ko is freaking out. After the recent events, just like Yuki he also started making a journal. Now on seeing his death, he starts writing his last message, but strangely the diary upgrades and welcomes him as the eighth diary owner. As he reads it, they find out the way to break free from this room. As they follow the diary's instructions, Yuno and Yuki's diary's future also starts to change. As Yuno picks it up to read it, Ko just barges inside the room. Yuki soon starts getting back to his senses but still, he doesn't have any strength to speak. He starts to remember how he ended up here. After drinking the cola Yuno gave him, he fell unconscious. And after gaining back his consciousness, he tried getting away but with Yuno here, he just couldn't. Back in the present, Ko tells Yuno to release everyone because according to his diary, he is going to succeed in it. Strangely, Yuno easily agrees to do so. She throws the operation panel's key towards him, and Ko uses it to unlock the room Maki and Mao are trapped in. But as he turns back, Yuno fires the crossbow. As she approaches to kill him, a new entry is made and she soon notices Yuki is freed. Yuki takes back the crossbow and slaps her. Since Yuno's diary only tells what Yuki does, he made Hinata kick the key Yuno dropped and freed himself. As Yuki starts untying Hinata, he is notified about three diary owners on their way to this hotel. Without any delay, he meets up with Aki and Mao. Yuno begs Yuki to not leave her alone because she cannot live without him. But Yuki gives her a pissed look and leaves the hotel. Nishijima picks them up. On the way, a car passes by in which there are the three diary owners. They notice Yuki but still doesn't turn back the car. Back in the hotel, Yuno gets ready and heads out to protect Yuki. The following day, Yuki meets up with others and shares after yesterday's meeting with Deus. It was revealed that the 8th diary owner can create multiple subsidiary owners using a server. And since there is only one real diary, destroying a subsidiary diary doesn't lead to their death. Just then Yuki is notified about other diary owners coming to his home in three days. While Aki and others are forming a plan, Yuki has to stay at home and communicate via radio. At night, a lot of noise is coming from the kitchen so with caution Yuki goes to check. He is relieved to know it's his mother and not Yuno. Ria has returned home to stay for a few days. As they start eating dinner, Yuki finds it weird to see there is too much food for two people. Ria tells him, it was also for Yuno, but after preparing the dinner, she left. Yuki is scared as hell. After two days, Yuki is taken to Ko's house with police providing protection. As they enter the house, everyone is amazed to see how huge it is. The reason Aki chose this place is because it has a cell tower. Meaning, that if it's turned off, the three subsidiary owners will not be able to use the diary as they will lose their connection with the server and then, it'll be easier to take them down. As hours pass by, finally the police report the three targets breaching the mansion. Suddenly, the light is cut off and now the remote to control the cell tower isn't working. Seeing the plan falling apart, Yuki begins to panic wondering how anyone can know about their plan. But he soon notices it's Yuno who has returned. Yuno has cut off electricity so only she can protect Yuki. With no other choice, Aki invites Yuno up. 
After tying her up, together with Ko, he goes to disable the cell tower. Soon, the two diary owners named Maru and Ahi enter. Maru is well versed in combat and easily takes down Nishijima. And because his diary predicts the next move his opponent makes, he has a huge advantage. Realizing they have no chance of winning in combat, everyone goes to hide until the cell tower is disabled. But with Ahi's diary, she easily gets the location of any person she will flirt with in the future. So they quickly go to their location and take down Mao and Hinata. Yuno pushes Yuki and quickly closes the door. Before they break the door, she requests Yuki to untie her. But Yuki refuses. After he truly wanted to marry her, Yuno locked him up and betrayed his feelings. Soon, Maru breaks the door, however, Aki has disabled the tower, so Maru and Ahi's diaries are disconnected. But despite this, they start laughing because they are also the seventh diary owners. Yuno tells Yuki she truly loves him and promises she'll never lock him up. Yuki finally unties the rope, and with it, Yuno grabs the knife. Maru and Ahi are lovers so their diary shows the future of each other. Meaning, this battle is to see whose love is stronger. Ahi throws her knife, but Yuno easily blocks it. And as Yuki praises her for it, Yuno becomes excited and keeps on blocking every knife. After all of the knives are emptied, Maru and Ahi retreat and take away Mao and Hinata outside to treat their wounds. Suddenly, the whole house starts to lit up in fire. Afterwards, they enter the house. On the other side, as Yuki is escaping, he clarifies to Yuno that he still doesn't trust her. But Yuno doesn't mind it, because as long as she can be useful it's enough to make her happy. All Yuki has to do is to command her, and she'll do it for him. Soon they have an encounter with Ahi and Maru. Yuno charges at them, but against their coordination, Yuno is taken down. Maru is furious to see her instead of protecting Yuno, it's Yuki who is being protected despite being a man. He takes his phone and furiously asks what kind of love is it. Yuki admits he is weak and that he has no other choice but to rely on Yuno. Maru with a disgusted look tells him to die and throws him off the floor. After Yuno goes unconscious, we go back to 14 years ago. In the Sakurami Tower, Ahi was abandoned by her parents. She waited for hours but no one came. That day she met Maru who was also an orphan. As they grew up, no matter where Maru went, Ahi stayed close to him. At first, Maru didn't like how clingy Ahi was, but he still decided to spend time with her. As time passes by Ahi eventually falls in love with him, but doesn't confess and keeps holding on to her one-sided crush. However, in the school, some of the girls start believing Ahi and Maru are dating. And the fact Ahi pretends to be the unluckiest girl despite having a boyfriend made them jealous and angry. So in order to teach her a lesson they use Maru's name and call her to the abandoned factory. Ahi arrives, but on seeing Maru hasn't arrived yet, she messages him. Soon after, instead of Maru, a bunch of boys enter the factory. They were told by the girls about Ahi not having any parents so it's fine for them to have their way with her. On the other side, Maru reads the message. He is confused and tries calling, but when Ahi doesn't respond, he begins to panic and rushes there. He arrives there, but it's too late. In anger, he beats everyone to a pulp and eventually kills them. After realizing what he has done and despite it, he wasn't able to protect Ahi. Maru tries to take his life. But Ahi stops him and begs him to not leave her like her parents. Maru apologizes and promises that from this day onwards he'll protect her and will never leave her side. Back in the present, Yuno and Yuki's diaries have been taken away and they are currently being treated in a hospital. As per Aki's plan, Nishijima has invited Mine, and a lie has been told to Yuki that Mine knows a way to beat Maru and Ahi. Because this way, Maru who has Yuki's diary has been notified about this false information, and just to be cautious he is not destroying the diary in order to gain more info. While Mine takes care of Yuki's recovery, surprisingly, Yuki's father, Kuro also visits the hospital. Someone told him his son was in hospital so he came to check on him. As they start to spend time together, Yuki who was earlier in the dark about their parents' divorce, finally gets to know that his father is in a huge debt, 
and because of this, he isn't able to return home. But Kuro promises Yuki that he is working on it, and will soon return home, so the whole family can watch the stars like he wanted. In the evening, while Yuki is still doing his recovery, at the hospital, Kuro is desperately searching for something. After he receives a call, we get to know Kuro has been ordered by someone to destroy Yuki's cell phone in return for his debt to be paid off. Yuno happens to hear it. The following day, Nishijima arrives at an orphanage which is run by Yoshita who is also the 8th diary owner. Suspecting the culprits behind destroying Ko's mansion are here he has come to raid it. Back at the hospital, as Yuno is about to get rid of Kuro, Yuki stops her and asks what's gotten into her. Yuno shares what she heard yesterday, and that she believes the person ordered is the 11th diary owner. Yuki finds it absurd and doesn't believe Yuno. A few seconds later, Yuno is called up by Maru. After knowing Yuki's father knows the 11th diary owner, Maru threatens Yuno to bring him to the Sakurami Tower or he'll break their cell phones. Yuno returns to the room and explains, in return for Yuki's cell phone's safety they want Kuro to visit them. At first, Kuro is confused, but knowing the diary is with them, he agrees. Everything is according to Yuno's plan. She could have gotten rid of Kuro when she had the chance, but she purposefully acted in front of Yuki so Maru would be notified, and later she could have a chance of retrieving their diaries along with getting rid of Kuro and the seven diary owners. After they arrive, the moment Kuro approaches Maru, he is taken down. Now with no use of Yuki and Yuno's diary, before he breaks it, Maru challenges Yuki to a duel so he can beat him for being a weak man who has to rely on his girlfriend to protect him. Yuki seeing his father knocked down, gets furious and charges with all his strength, but Maru easily grabs him and throws him away. Soon, Kuro gets up. He picks up Yuki's phone and breaks it. Yuki is in disbelief. But he doesn't die. Just then, Yuno comes charging at Ahi and snatches away the bouquet in which the real phones are. The first time, Maru showed them the phone, Yuno realized they were fake because they had no scratches. Yuno gives the phone to Yuki and tells him, she is the only one he can trust. Kuro approaches Yuki and requests him to give the phone to him. He promises to gift him a much better phone once his debt is paid off. Yuki earlier believed that his father betrayed him but now he understands his father doesn't know about the future diaries. Just then, the building starts to shake heavily and the floor beneath Yuki breaks and he begins to fall. Both Yuno and Kuro rushes to save him. Yuno reaches in time and saves Yuki. However, Maru grabs Kuro and takes him away. Using the diary, Yuki finds out they are going to use a parachute to escape. In the Yoshida's orphanage, Nishijima is notified about the situation in the Sakurami Tower. He came here to search for the servers controlling the subsidiary diaries, but he wasn't able to find them. Back in the tower, Maru and Ahi are happy to see after such a long wait they are finally married. After arriving at the top floor, Yuno is standing in front. Then, Yuki's voice comes saying he is hiding because he is weak, so now Yuno will take care of the fight. Maru is pissed and charges at Yuno. He dodges her knife and kicks her. He takes her phone and gets to know Yuki's location. Maru goes to the room but finds out Yuki is not there. It's because the diary he has is a fake one. Meaning, that Ahi is now in danger. As he goes out to warn her. Yuki throws his dart and misses. But Yuno kills her. Soon the building starts to collapse. Just then... Kuro snatches away the parachute and escapes, leaving Yuki in complete shock. Ria was earlier called by Nishijima about Yuki being stuck in the tower so she came. On seeing Kuro in a parachute, she confronts him, demanding where Yuki is. Kuro doesn't want to admit he ran away like a loser and left his son dying, so tells Ria he doesn't know about anything and insists her to let him go. But when Ria doesn't, Kuro begins to panic. The scene shifts back inside the building. After the roof collapses, you know, Yuki and Ahi are stuck under a concrete block. Despite being stuck, Ahi is glad to know Maru is safe and can live on. But Maru isn't going to abandon Ahi. He keeps making the way despite being heavily injured. 
It's hard for him to lift the concrete blocks so Yuki helps him and asks Yuno to help too. But Yuno doesn't want to, or else they will lose Ahi as their hostage. Yuki asks her if she really loves him, or if she is just a psychopath. He wants to trust her, but if she keeps ignoring what he says then it's hard for him. Yuno drops the knife and helps. After making outside, Maru holds Ahi in his arms. He gives the parachute to Yuki and tells him to take care of the girl who loves him. After this, together with Ahi, he dies. Yuki and Yuno successfully land, but Nishijima comes and gives an unfortunate news about Ria's death. At night, Yuki is sitting in his room devastated to accept the reality. He tries asking Deus to bring back his mother, but Deus refuses. His life is soon going to end and if the next god is not chosen before it, this whole universe will be destroyed. After Deus leaves, Murmur tells Yuki the only way to bring back his mother is by becoming a god. Back in the human world, Yuki gets to know it's his father who killed his mother. He confronts him and tells him to turn himself in. But Kuro laughs and asks if he has any proof of him doing so. Yuki notices a receipt from a pawn shop and wonders what is it. He decides to follow him to see if he can be led to any proof. The next day, Nishijima interrogates Yuno about the third body found at her home. But Yuno doesn't answer and leaves. So now, Nishijima has to wait until the DNA report comes in. On the other side, Yuki wakes up a bit late and goes straight to the pawn shop. He manages to find Kuro, and sees him getting in a car heading to the shrine. Yuki follows him and as soon as he arrives, he snatches away the bag to see what's inside. There he notices, it's a telescope. Kuro has decided to turn himself in. Just before that, he wanted to make things right. He came here to ask for forgiveness and after that, he was planning to return the telescope to Yuki that he pawned. Kuro promises Yuki that once he is done serving, he'll get a proper job to start over. Yuki forgives his father, but on the way a static noise comes and Kuro gets stabbed by a guard. Soon after, other guards surround Yuki and try to attack him. Yuki in anger eliminates them one by one using his diary. Soon after Yuno also arrives. Yuki finally decides to become a god and eliminate every diary owner. While pointing the knife at Yuno, he threatens to kill even her. Yuno kisses Yuki. She wants to die by his hands, but before that, she wants him to use her until the very end. After a few days in the city hall, the mayor orders Yoshida's orphanage to be destroyed as they have been accused of harboring the man who caused the tower explosion. Everyone feels it's too cruel, but the mayor is firm with his decision with a promise to provide a home to the orphans. The scene shifts to the casualty cathedral where the owners insist Deus eliminate Yuno and Yuki because they haven't been attending the meeting for the past five days. And because Deus's death is near, the eleventh diary owner wants to get rid of them. Deus agrees and as he is about to eliminate them, just then Yuki together with Yuno arrives. He reveals the eleventh diary owner's identity as their city's mayor. And it's absolutely correct. With this, Deus unhides everyone's identity. For the past five days, Yuki was in the lobby of City Hall gathering all sorts of news, events and data that were happening in their city. So the moment their city mayor passed the order to demolish Yoshida's orphanage, he immediately knew he was behind. After revealing this, Yuno and Yuki are planning to make an alliance with Yoshida and take on the mayor. According to Yuno, the mayor plans to get his hands on Yoshita's multiplier diary so he can increase his force. Yuki is glad to know he is getting a step closer to becoming a god. Yuno suddenly jumps and grabs Yuki. She wants him to kill every diary owner so he can become god and then bring back his parents. On the other side, Nishijima is in shock to know the 11th diary owner is the mayor because, from today, he is on bodyguard duty for him. After this, Nishijima reveals that Yuno's parents were Ushio Gasai and Saika Gasai. Both of them were from an elite banking family. However, they didn't have any children, meaning Yuno was adopted. On the other side, Yuno and Yuki convince Yoshida to make an alliance and now are planning to attack the mayor. Some of the Yoshida's children like Taro don't trust Yuki, but because they want to protect Yoshida they are willing to cooperate. As per the plan, 
Yuki will use tear gas and target the mayor. Rin will use her diary to direct other subsidiary owners. And lastly, Taro will protect Yueshida, and using his copy diary he will keep a watch on Yuki to see if there's no problem with the plan. As of now, everything is going to Yuna's plan. Rin, another subsidiary owner gives a rice ball to Yuki. She first met him in the Omekita incident, and knows Yuki is not a bad person. And just like him, she expresses that their mother isn't a bad person either. She didn't want to become God, but it was they who requested her to so she could save this world and make it better. After eating the rice ball, finally, it's time to initiate the plan. As the mayor is approaching, they stop his car and use smoke to block the view. Then the subsidiary owners begin attacking the guards. However, soon a device pops out from the car that jams all the subsidiary's phones. And surprisingly, Yuki is shooting down every subsidiary owner one by one. While on the other side, Yuno brutally gets rid of Rin and Taro. Everything is according to Yuno's plan. Yuki apologizes, but he promises to save everyone when he becomes the god. Ueshida manages to escape and gets in the mayor's car. Soon, Yuno and Yuki also get in the car and go after them. With this, they are planning to take down both 11th and 8th. But then, Yuno freaks out to know Aki has found out who the third body is. Yuno begins to worry. She destroyed every single evidence but if this is true, she will definitely lose Yuki. But Yuki assures her, no matter what he will not let go of her this time. Yuno attacks the tire, but with the help of the mayor's diary, they are able to evade attacks. With no other choice, Yuki just pushes the car off the highway. Yuno points the gun at him but the mayor is unsurprised and soon Aki with Mine arrives. Aki gives a box to Yuki and tells him to open it. Yuki opens it, and it's an umbilical cord of Yuno. It was found in the orphanage she was in, and after comparing the DNA of the third body with it, they turn out to be a perfect match. Meaning, that the real Yuno is already dead, and this one right here is a fake one. Yuki is in disbelief. Yuno begins to panic. She promises that all are lying and she is the real one. Yuki hugs Yuno and promises he'll never doubt her. After they escape, the scene shifts to night. A meeting is called up to increase the protection for the mayor. Just after 30 minutes, Mine arrives at the location where the mayor is. It's a room which has the third most powerful supercomputer in Japan. The mayor wants Yueshita's multiplier diary so that he can turn every resident of this city into a future diary owner. And this way, he'll give birth to a kingdom where people have the ability to predict the future. Mine had enough of this insanity. She throws a grenade at the mayor, but surprisingly he catches it and throws it back. Nishijima sees the explosion and informs other officers. Fortunately, Mine safely escapes. But soon, the police start searching for her. Wherever she escapes, the police are strangely able to arrive before her. Mine starts wondering if the mayor also has a diary similar to Tsubaki's, which allows him to know about the future of those working for him. Before she is found out, Nishijima saves her and gives a false report to the other officers. Mine with a suspicious tone demands what are his intentions. Nishijima knows about the mayor's intention and that's why he has decided to join her side. He takes out the ring and proposes to her. Mine isn't very familiar with what marriage is, so she has to think hard, and after realizing what it is, she quickly pulls away her hand, accusing him of being after her body and wanting to make babies with her. Nishijima bluntly replies yes, it's indeed true. Mine heavily blushes. She cannot take it anymore and walks away. She wants to destroy the computer before things become ugly. Nishijima stops her and promises he'll make her happy. Mine gets fed up and promises she will if he'll destroys the computer. Nishijima agrees. Inside the building, Yueshita finally reveals her multiplier diary. The mayor uses it and starts connecting it to the supercomputer. On the other side, Mine begins infiltrating using the flashbang. But to her surprise, the security is well prepared because of the mayor's diary. Soon after, the connection is complete. But Nishijima comes running and throws the grenade inside the room. Afterwards, both of them manage to escape. 
but Manet still suspects if they are really successful. Because if the mayor has a similar diary to Tsubaki, then he must have predicted Nishijima's action. She wonders if there is anything more to it. After fulfilling the promise, Nishijima hugs Manet, saying she belongs to him now. As he tries to kiss her, Manet also gives up on resisting. But just then a radio message comes about informing multiple crimes happening throughout the city. It's because the computer that was destroyed was only a part of the whole supercomputer. And as a result, everyone in the city has a future diary. People now know about the future movement of stocks, about when they will die and much more. In the cathedral, Deus is already at his limit and decides to take some rest. He realizes Murmur is planning something behind his back. Before he loses his powers, he is planning to do something. In a building, Hinata and others join Manet and Nishijima after Aki told them. Now they all have their own future diary. In Ko's diary, it mentions that two supercomputers named Holon are at the top of the Quad Towers. And they have to be destroyed at the same time. So for this, they all would have to work together. At first, Ko didn't want to help because of the things Manet did to his school. But if saving the city is by helping a criminal, he is ready to go. The next day, they arrive at the Quad Tower and split into two groups. The mayor is prepared and orders the guards to finish every single one of them. But to his surprise, the diary predicted wrong. It's because Manet finally realizes the mayor's diary's ability is to see into others' owners' diaries. That's why in the first place, he was aware of her. But when Nishijima took action, he wasn't able to stop her. So in order to fool him, Manet only needs to feed him a lie by writing a false entry. And with it, Manet with others are easily able to intrude. But the mayor has something up to his sleeve. As Manet and Nishijima are on the way, a bomb suddenly explodes and soon after Nishijima gets shot. As the guard continues to shoot, Nishijima blocks the bullets and saves Manet. Soon, Yuki comes and gets rid of the guards. With a smile, he apologizes for using Nishijima as bait. On the other side, Yuno is clearing the floors using a gun and a katana. After meeting up, as per the plan, Yuno goes to free Ko and others, while Yuki goes to get rid of the mayor. On the way, Mine points the gun at Yuki, threatening to kill him if he fails to eliminate the mayor after he used Nishijima as bait. Yuki doesn't say anything and heads towards the mayor. Soon he finds him, but the mayor gets inside the vault of the bank which used to be owned by Gasai, meaning Yuno's parents. Mine threatens the mayor's assistant and opens the door, but to their surprise, there is another one. And this can't be opened through a passcode or keycard. Seeing there is no way, Mine points the gun at Yuki. Nishijima was the only man who ever said he'd make her happy, and now she'll kill Yuki and avenge his death. As Mine shoots, Yuki dodges and escapes. Mine finds it pathetic to see Yuki's sole motivation to become god is bringing back his parents. She emphasizes that literally half of the population has lost their loved ones, and unlike her, he is grateful to be even able to remember the good memories. She lost her parents before she could even speak and amid those crumbled buildings, she had to rely on stealing to survive. While Mine continues to speak, Yuki is in a tight position. He knows his death is certain. But even if he does something to change the future, the static noise will give away his position. While this is happening, the mayor is enjoying the show. He isn't afraid of anyone because the only way to open the second door is by using a retina scan. The only registered eyes are his, Yuno's and her parents. But because Yuno's parents are dead and she is a fake one, no one can open the second door. On the other side, after freeing up Ko and others, Yuno finds Yueshita and tries to attack her. But Aki appears and blocks the attack. Just then, Yuno receives a new entry about Yuki's will. In it he has written that after he is dead, he wants Yuno to bring back his parents when she becomes the god. On the other side, Mine hears the static noise, but it's only the cell phone. Just then, Yuki shoots the gun. He didn't kill Mine because if possible he doesn't want to kill anyone. Mine quickly picks up the gun and as she is about to shoot him, she sees an image of herself. Mine realizes Yuki is just like her. Lost his parents, desperate for help, 
and no one to help him. But she is taken down, as Yuki pulls the trigger in self-defense. After this, he goes to the vault. The mayor shares how boring Minea's death was. Considering she was an international criminal he was hoping for more. But to his surprise, Mene is still alive. She has a bomb that will detonate when her heartbeat stops, and in front of it, even the vault is nothing. She locks herself in between the doors and tells Yuki to make everything right when he becomes a god. Before her death, Mene sees her parents and her younger self thanking her for this decision. Mene breaks the phone, and the bomb explodes. However, there isn't even a scratch at the vault. Just then, Yuno comes and tells Yuki to destroy the whole lawn in the south tower, while she keeps an eye on the mayor. Yuki agrees and leaves. Back in the vault, the mayor is fine with having only one holon. But to his surprise, the vault door opens, and without any hesitation, Yuno just takes him down. On the other side, Yuki destroys the holon and is notified about the mayor's death. He wonders how she pulled it off. Now, with the mayor dead, the only diary owner remaining is Yoshida, and as per promise, Aki will hand over her to Yuki. In Aki's home, Aki earlier believed it was better to hand over Yoshida to Yuki as he is the best person to become the god. But after seeing Yuno was able to easily unlock the door, he is having second thoughts. Aki knows Yuki's sole motivation is to become a god to bring back his parents. But as for Yuno, it's a total mystery. Just then, a black sphere-like thing appears on the rooftop. And not just Aki's home, it's all over the city. The world has begun to crumble. On the other side, Murmur is confused as to how Deus is dying so soon. As per her, the world was supposed to end on July 28th. She suspects he did something behind her back. Just then, Yoshida with Aki enter the cathedral. Murmur becomes furious to see a non-diary owner and tries to get rid of him, but Deus stops her. Aki asks if the person who becomes God will really have the power to reset everything. Deus replies that if he means by reset is dead coming back to life, then no, it's not possible. Aki knew he was right. Without wasting any more time, he returns to the human world to tell Yuki about it. Ueshita has created a subsidiary diary for Aki. Yuki and Yuno are on the way to retrieve Ueshita, when Yuno suddenly asks Yuki if he will be able to kill Aki and others if they betray him. Yuki refuses to answer because he trusts Aki. But as they arrive, they soon notice Aki has betrayed them and Ueshita with others is escaping. Yuno in anger stabs Aki. Yuki is in shock to read that Aki is dead. As Yuno approaches him, Aki is still alive. He was wearing a stab resistance vest. And afterwards, whatever Yuno tries to pull, Aki has a counter and easily blocks her attacks. On the other side, Yuki is confused as to how despite what the diary is showing, Aki is still able to survive the attacks. He figures out that Aki also has a future diary and warns Yuno to step back. Aki praises Yuki and reveals his subsidiary diary allows him to foresee the actions of the diary owners. Seeing this will take time, Yuno tells Yuki to go after Ueshida while she deals with Aki. Yuki agrees. On his way, he is in shock to see even Aki has betrayed him. Back in Aki's home, just like Aki planned, he is successfully able to stall Yuno and now Hanada and others can tell Yuki about the truth. But surprisingly, Yuno just stabs herself. Now, if she dies, Yuki will be notified about her death, and no matter what others say, he will not trust them. Aki is now in deep thought. On the other side, Yuki arrives. Hinata comes and tries to convince him how from the very beginning, he is being manipulated by Yuno. She tells him that even if he becomes a god, he can't bring back people to life. Hearing this Yuki is in shock. He starts laughing and accuses Hinata of lying because a god can do anything. But after Hinata tells him, it's Deus himself who said it, Yuki starts to freak out, realizing he can't bring back people he has killed. Just then, he receives a call. Aki on his way is trying to call Yuki, but he isn't picking up. It's because Yuno is on the line. She begs Yuki to save her or else Aki will kill her. She warns him that all of his fake friends are planning to betray him. Yuki checks his phone and confirms it's true. He points the gun at Hinata, 
and asks why they all are planning to betray him. Hinata tries to convince him that it's Yuno who is manipulating him, but Yuki pulls the trigger and kills her. Afterwards, when Mao calls him a coward who can't accept reality, Yuki also takes her down, alongside Ko. As he passes their body, he promises to bring them back once he becomes the god. Aki finally arrives. On seeing the dead bodies, he regrets treating Yuno's wound, because of which she was able to mislead Yuki and as a result, everyone died. He tells Yuki that from the very start, Yuno pretended to be his ally so that later she would kill him and become a god. Just then, Yuno arrives. Suddenly, Aki kisses Yuki in front of her. As he goes to destroy her diary, Aki manages to destroy it. But strangely, nothing happens. And Yuno ends up dealing a massive cut. On the verge of his death, Aki starts wondering how this is even possible. He knows the diary wasn't fake because, at the last second, he saw the static appear on the screen. But just then he realizes, Yuno's diary always referred to Yuki by his first name. But the one he destroyed referred to him by Amano, which is his family name. On the other side, Yuki asks Yuno how she is alive despite her diary being destroyed. Yuno assures him it was a fake. Yuki doesn't give it much of a thought and goes to eliminate Yueshida. Before her death, Yueshida requests Yuki to make a world where her children can live in peace. With her death, now it's only Yuno and Yuki remaining. On the other side, Aki is still barely alive. All this time he believed the dead body found in Yuno's house was the real one and the current one is a fake. But now, thinking back to how Yuno was able to unlock the vault, he finally understands the truth. His vocal cords are destroyed so he tries to show Yuki a written message. As Yuno sees Aki approaching, she immediately beheads him but still, Yuki reads the message. In the cathedral, Deus is dead and the core left behind is the last remaining power that is keeping the world intact until the 28th of July. Soon, Yuki and Yuno are notified about it. Three days later, in Yuno's house, Yuki is much relaxed as he doesn't have to fear getting killed. By this time, he understands he can't bring back dead people, but the fact Aki warned him about Yuno killing him and the message he left behind is still bothering him. After dinner, as Yuki tries to go to his room, Yuno stops him. She starts crying, asking why he is not flirting with her. Yuno understands all she is good for is killing, but still after everything, she was hoping Yuki would fall in love with her, but even now he is going to sleep in another room. Yuno feels pathetic and goes to her room. Yuki can see how much she loves him, and just the thought of her killing him even after having enough opportunities seems unreal. Finally, it's the 27th of July the day before the world is going to end. By now, Yuki feels bad for doubting Yuno and now before the world ends, he wants to return her true feelings. For the first time, Yuki invites Yuno to have a bath together. Afterwards, they go into the room and make love. After two minutes, now that they have become one, Yuki requests Yuno to tell him the reason she lied about everyone coming back to life if he becomes a god. Yuno suddenly takes out her axe. She apologizes for lying. But she did it so Yuki would start looking to become the god. And now that they have finally eliminated everyone, for the last thing she wants him to kill her. But Yuki refuses. If becoming a god is by losing the person he loves, he doesn't want. Yuki is glad that they both can die peacefully. But he still wonders why Aki showed him that strange message. Yuno gets up and asks about it. Yuki shares that Aki believed Yuno was from the future and had already become a god. After that, she went back in time to come to this world and took the place of this world's Yuno by killing her. Suddenly, Yuno grabs the axe and attacks. All she wanted was a day with them being happy. But now, in this world also she will not be getting that. Yuno starts attacking. Yuki dodges the attacks and ends up in front of the hole. Just then Murmur appears and pushes him into it. After that, Yuki sees the past when he and Yuno had their first interaction. Murmur shares that by this time, Yuno had taken her revenge after she trapped them inside the cage and starved them to death. Yuno had no hopes for her future until she met Yuki, who gave her the hope. After this, Murmur shows how the first world ended. 
Yuno's dream was to become Yuki's wife but it never became a reality because soon the survival game started and only one could have survived. After killing every diary owner, Yuno and Yuki choose to die together by taking poison. However, Yuno only pretended. She also believed by becoming a god she would be able to bring back Yuki, but she soon realized it wasn't possible. After being in a state of shock to not be able to see Yuki, she used her god powers to go back in time to the second world, when Yuki was still alive. Without any hesitation, she got rid of second world Yuno because she didn't want to share the love. On seeing this, Yuki gets emotional to realize the girl who promised to become his bride is no more. He desperately tries to help her, but Murmur tells him it's pointless because these are only visions. Strangely, on the verge of death, Yuno hears Yuki's voice and starts requesting him to help her. Murmur is in disbelief to witness this. She immediately cancels the illusion and they return to the present. A few things Murmur didn't tell Yuki was that she is also from the first world. Meaning, she is actually Yuno's servant. After Yuno came to this world and killed the second world Yuno, Murmur used her powers to erase a part of Yuno's memory. And the reason similar things didn't occur as happened in the first world was because Yuki opened the door in Yuno's house because of which the truth about the second world Yuno came out. Eventually, Yuno slowly started to regain her memories, after which she started making small changes which ended up changing the whole timeline. Back in the present, Yuki confronts Yuno and asks the reason she is trying to kill him. For Yuno, she wanted to die at the hands of Yuki and help him become the god. But when Yuki refused to kill her and said he wanted to die together, Yuno couldn't accept it. If Yuki does not become god, then the whole universe will be destroyed. So to prevent the destruction, the deus from the past will not start the survival game and choose a different method to select the next god. And because of this, Yuno and Yuki's relationship will not be closer, and she will end up staying only a stalker. That's why, if Yuki doesn't kill her, she will kill him and become the god. This way she will prevent the world from ending and will go back in time to spend more days with that world's Yuki. She will do it infinitely. Hearing this, Yuki starts to freak out. Just then, Yuno uses her powers and Yuki starts to fall. He realizes what a grave mistake he has made for his selfish reasons. As Yuki loses the grip and falls, Murmur is about to declare Yuno as the winner, but then a static noise comes, showing Yuki is still alive. Mine makes a surprising entry and comes to Yuki's rescue. At first, Murmur was surprised but then she realizes it's Deus's doing. Murmur with Yuno uses time leap and goes to the third world. Mine and Yuki quickly follow them. They arrive there and end up crashing into a building. The reason Mine is still alive is that at the time when Mine was about to disappear, Deus saved her and brought her to the place where even Murmur couldn't come. Deus was quick to realize that Murmur was not his servant, but because he was almost at his end, he transferred a part of his power and knowledge to Mine. As a person who has suffered the most, she was the rightful one to change the world for the good. Currently, they are in the third world and two years into the past. Meaning, the survival game has another year to take place. Just then, Yuki receives an entry of Yuno coming here to kill this world's Yuno. There is still two hour, so Yuki wants to save this world's Yuno. In this world, Yuno is being abused by her mother, Sabaki's parents are about to head out in their car, and the mayor presents the idea of a future diary to Deus. But just then, Deus is notified about an anomaly. After some time, Yuki and Mine arrive at Yuno's home. Saika is out, so it's only Yuno in the home. Yuki opens the door and witnesses Yuno's terrible condition. Yuno is so starved that she is eating the wood from Tatama's mat and choking on it. Yuki immediately calls an ambulance, and the future changes. Mine is furious. They are here to stop Yuno and Murmur, but if they do anything else, it will change this world's future. Yuki knows it, but he just can't abandon Yuno. Just then, Yuno and Murmur arrive. Yuno has brought a sphere-like thing in which she has caught Yuki's parents from this world. Mine immediately takes off with both of them. Yuki sees his parents and wants to save them, but Mine is pissed and tells him his parents are dead. They have already changed the future by freeing Yuno and can't risk any more. 
They can't bring back anyone from their world, so they have to save this world's future by eliminating Yuno. Back at Yuno's home, the ambulance arrives. But among them, Ushio has also come. He received a call from the hospital so he came here thinking his wife had done something again to Yuno. Yuno sees a glimpse of the past she suffered, and in anger, she stabs him and tries to get rid of others as well. But Murmur stops her. On the other side, Mine has some job to do, so she drops Yuki at the school and goes away. Yuki while carrying Yuno heads to the class where everything began. After putting her to safety, Yuno appears and immediately starts to attack. Yuki tries his best to avoid the attacks and go further, so this world Yuno isn't caught in the fight. Soon, Murmur starts using her powers to surround Yuki with spheres and make them explode. Yuki is barely able to dodge them. Yuno reads her diary, but she is confused as to what our true emotions are. While this is happening, Mine calls Kei and tells him to treat his son's illness before it gets worse. Mine broke her own rule to not change this world's future, but she wanted to keep the promise she made to Kei. Back in the school, Yuki has barely avoided death, but he is firm in his decision to convince Yuno to return to the second world. Yuno asks Yuki why is he getting in her way. Yuki replies it's because he loves her. Because of these words, Yuno gets flustered and misses hitting Yuki. As Murmur tries to attack, Mine arrives and starts fighting her. Thankfully, because of this Yuki finally gets close to Yuno. He tries to convince her to leave this world and in return, he will die. But Yuno laughs, saying she loves him that's why she'll not return. She uses a sphere and takes down Yuki. Using her powers, she traps Yuki inside a sphere, where Yuki finds himself with all the things he ever wanted. Yuno earlier wanted to kill Yuki and become the god, but she realized that she just couldn't. So now, she is trapping Yuki inside a sphere and leaving him in this world for eternity. Then she will become the second world's god and will return to this world to take part in the survival game. This is the best way to achieve her dreams without killing the person she loves. Before Yuki can say anything, the sphere closes. At the police station, Saika has come to report her daughter gone missing, but just then Kei is notified about the explosion happening at the school. Throughout the city, as the explosion becomes more frequent and louder, it starts to catch everyone's attention, including the diary owners. Back at the school, Mine brings beaten up Murmur and is ready to fight Yuno. However, Yuno releases Murmur's limit, and now her power is off the charts. With this, like a vicious monster Murmur beats Mine into a pulp, dealing a huge damage to her arm and finally taking her down. While this is happening, Yuki has completely forgotten about everything and is living the life he hoped. After having breakfast, the family heads out to watch the stars in the mountains. But strangely, he feels like there is someone important to him that he has forgotten about. Outside, with Yuki and Mine being taken care of, Murmur heals Ushio. As Yuno is about to kill this world's Yuno, she notices she is mumbling about requesting her parents to help her. Yuno finds it pathetic to see how innocent she is. Yuno shares what her future going to be. Her mother's mental state will worsen as her father will rarely visit home. Because of this, she will get more abused and all the hopes she had for a happy family will vanish. But one day, she will get a chance to drug them with sleeping pills and then she'll shut them in the cage for revenge. After a month of starving, they'll die and like always she will be lonely. But the third world you know doesn't feel that way. She loves her parents and knows one day they will understand her. Yuno realizes she also used to think the same but wonders where things went wrong. Soon, the police and Saika arrive. On seeing her husband, she rushes to the roof. On the other side, Murmur is freaking out to see how rapidly the future is changing. Nishijima meets Mine Wei before they are supposed to. Tsubaki's parents were supposed to leave tonight but because of the explosions they didn't, and a bomb was found in their car which was planted by Funatsu. Because of this, Omekito which was going to turn into an evil cult, now retains its aim to help the weak. Hojo's parents who were supposed to join Omekita didn't and stayed with Hojo. In the alleyway, the serial killer is caught by Hirasaka. In Hinata's house, Tsukishima realizes how much his daughter cares for the dogs and how she wants to learn to train them. 
In the orphanage, Yueshita receives a call from the mayor about funding her orphanage. It's because the future diary on which the mayor was working revealed to him about his death and how the winner instead of saving the world will travel back in time. Because of this, Deus decided to change the way to select the next god. And now, Murmur is freaking out because at this rate the survival game itself may never happen. Back inside the school, as Yuno tries to attack, just then Ushio comes in between and takes the hit. Soon after, Saika also comes and is glad to find her daughter. Yuno is in disbelief to see her parents worrying for her. Just then, Kei comes and points the gun at Yuno. Back in the sphere, Yuki finally remembers about Yuno. He feels sad to leave his parents, but he decides to choose Yuno over his lost dream. Back outside, Yuno starts to see herself as a villain. She is glad for this world Yuno, but she loves Yuki and for him, she must kill this world Yuno. As she rushes at her, Kei pulls the trigger, the second world murmur stops the bullet, and Yuki breaks free and stops Yuno. While the second world murmur takes care of the first world murmur, Yuno is emotional to see Yuki choose her over his dream. Yuki tells Yuno, she doesn't belong here. He requests her to kill him so she can go back to being the god of the second world. Yuno raises the knife and stabs herself. In the end, she just cannot kill the person she loves. Both of them share a kiss for the last time, and soon after Yuno dies. With this, Murmur declares the winner is Yuki, and without disrupting this world anymore, they head to the second world. And soon, the world regains the balance. Two years later, the third world Deus is still alive because he didn't start the survival game, which was supposed to have consumed a lot of his powers. So now he has time to think about how to choose the next god. After receiving Deus permission, Mine is now settled in this world. She and Nishijima are married and have two adorable children. Thanks to Mine, Kei's son is soon going to recover. Aki along with others enjoys taking care of Tsukishima's dogs. Tsubaki's parents are alive and she hasn't gone through any of the traumatic things. Hojo is having a great time with his parents. Ueshita and the mayor are a couple. Maru and Ahi are married and soon going to have a baby. And lastly, Yuno is close friends with Aki and others. After the school was destroyed, she transferred to a different school and hence, never had the chance to meet Yuki. But despite it, she feels like there is something precious to her that she has forgotten about. The scene shifts at night, Yuno is talking with her imaginary friend about how she feels like some of her memories are missing. Suddenly, Yuno finds herself in the cathedral. Murmur is alerted about the infiltration and goes to stop her from proceeding further. But just then, Mine comes. She tells Yuno to go ahead to regain her memories while she takes care of Murmur. Yuno starts running, and on the way, she starts to remember a boy who was very close to her. She enters a sphere-like room and finds the first world Murmur who is in captivity. On the other side, Deus comes and stops Murmur and Minea's fight. The fact that Yuno traveled to this dimension is enough to prove it's her fate to meet the person she loves. All this time, Yuno's imaginary friend was first world Murmur. Before she was sealed, Murmur absorbed Yuno's core, which ended up transferring her memories to her. As a result, she started to sympathize with her and was trying her best to communicate with the third world Yuno. As the servant of First Worlds Yuno, Murmur requests Yuno to take all the memories of her master. They include happy memories as well as tragic and painful ones. Despite this, Yuno takes it and remembers everything about Yuki. On the other side, it has been 10,000 years since Yuki became the god of space and time. He doesn't know what happened to the third world after he left, but he hopes Yuno and others were able to live a peaceful life. He has the powers to create a new world but doesn't want to because there would be no Yuno. All he has is his diary with the last entry in it. Just then, the future changes. Yuno breaks through dimensions with the help of Deus and comes back to reunite with her Yuki. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.